Hello tanks and tankettes and good lord yes it's this tank but I promise I won't swear this time because I'm not having to play it myself. I just have to watch somebody else suffer through it. In this case it is circling CM1994. Why does he own this? Why is he playing it? I can only assume he suffered some kind of horrible head injury that he you know fell over experienced a concussion and uh, came to in a hospital several days later to learn that he'd accidentally bought this thing during that uh, that uh, blackout period. So uh, here he is in his Panzer 3K, one of the worst premium tanks in the game, and he's three marking it. Now he's actually submitted a bunch of these replays to my replay portal and they're pretty much all tier 5 games, and that's for a reason. This thing, by the way, sees tier 7s. Um, it, it's sort of... sort of passable when it's top tier, but even when it's top tier it's not very good. It should be a tier 4, quite simply, and even as a tier 4 it would probably still need some buffs. Uh, as it is, as he's trying to 3 market, he's got full premium ammo and full premium consumables. I can only assume he's got quite a good crew in this thing as well. I did a little check. Without binoculars, the best view range you can get is 400 and something meters. You can get it over 400 using food, uh, vents, optics, and uh, a Brothers in Arms crew. Now, I don't know how much of that is true, but either way, he seems to at least have an over 400 meters view range because some of the games he submitted had quite a lot of spotting. And of course, if you're trying to three mark, assistance and spotting damage also counts, but this game is going to be more about damage done himself. Now the sins of this tank are numerous. It's got some things which are average for a tier 5 medium, it's got one or two th things that are actually okay for a tier 5 medium, I mean the very best thing about it is that it has 600 hit points, but the only reason that it has 600 hit points is to try and make up for some of the other deficiencies it has. It's a bit of soft balancing that frankly doesn't really work because the rest of it is so bad. Now, like I said, it can see tier 7s. It's not especially fast. I mean, 40 kilometers an hour is sort of average for this tier. The Shermans do that. The Panzer IV does that as well. I think the Panzer III IV also does that. So, you know, it's not super fast, but it's not super slow either. Uh, but it has got a pretty bad power to weight ratio, so it's sluggish. And one area, speed wise, where it does absolutely fall behind nearly everything else is the reverse speed. It's got something like minus 12 kilometers now. All the others are around 18 to 20. So, I, I mean, there might be something else that's as bad as it. Um, I think the G1R is not particularly uh, mobile either, but I guess the dirt gun to play with. So the mobility is pretty awful. It doesn't have armor, because, you know, it's Panzer three. Uh, it can't really um, sit and, and it, it can't take snapshots. You, you can't sit and aim and aim because you don't have the armor. Um, it's just, it's one of these things. Sometimes you get characteristics that synergize nicely. In this case, it's the opposite of that. It's negative characteristics that all kind of add together to make something that's so much worse. I think the worst thing overall though um, is the gun handling. It is, it's not only that it, it's a, a basically a stock 75 mil gun for tier 5, so you're already suffering for, for penetration. Now that doesn't matter so much when you're going full APCR because you're trying to 3 mark the thing, but um, it, it is just it's bad. The the bloom when you are moving around with this thing is bad. So you have to stop. You get the full aim time and you don't have the armor to take the hits. You don't have the reverse speed to get out of there. It's just... I don't know. Wargaming hasn't buffed it since it was released so it's still just as bad as when it came out. And that pretty much is the reason why I picked out this game. Um, it's, it's just to crap on this thing all over again because it's so horrible. Now talking of horrible, I mean the matchmaking is pretty good, um, but some of his top tiers aren't very... Um, oh look, there's artillery. There is actually a KV-220 platoon on his team, both of whom have been sniping for close on five minutes now. They've been sat in that uh, bush that scouts and tank destroyers use 
which is also currently being occupied by an Su-26, and they're just, you know, sitting there and sniping. But fortunately for CM, the enemy team, especially the enemy top tier heavies, are almost as bad. And the KV-1 actually at least tried to go to the hill. Uh, their own KV-1 is um, defending the south area, so CM really is on the front line in a tank that cannot afford to be, but it can't really be anywhere else either. There's nothing this tank does well. There's some things that it is average at, and there's some things that it's very, very bad at, and it's all in a package that, you know, Wargaming wants you to pay money for, actual money. That that was always the thing that boggled the mind the most. This was not some, like, freebie or reward or... It's on the level of some of the more bad gift tanks. The things that you get around Christmas and anniversaries where it's basically a, a free garage slot for most people because the tank itself isn't very good, but mostly those are tier 2 and tier 3 tanks, except this is at tier 5 and, oh wait, it's an actual premium you have to pay money for. The mind just still boggles so much because it's so bad. So very bad. So he's, uh, I mean, he's done 600 damage so far. 700 spotting, he actually blocked a shot, but that was from a DW2, which has a really quite bad gun. So, um, you know, like I said, the armor's not particularly great. At, at tier 4, the actual Panzer 3, I'll say the, pan, the actual Panzer 3, I think there's a tier 3 Panzer 3 as well. But the tier 4 Panzer 3, for a tier 4, the frontal armor's actually kind of okay when you're top tier. But when you are this slow, and suddenly you can tier, uh, see tier 7s, um, it's just bad, it's just so bad. As it turns out, a lot of the enemy team were base camping, and uh, with CM at least trying to spot from this position, I mean he is I think the one that's largely giving vision here, uh, and with the KV-220s finally moving forwards, after nearly half the battle having elapsed, and um, there's finally a bit of forward motion. They're down to the last four enemy tanks. I mean, they've lost half their own team, but they are at last on the offensive. Now, with less than half his health left, uh, the OI can easily kill him. Um, the KV-1, he could survive a hit from, unless it's a derp KV-1. And, of course, there's still artillery as well. That uh, Sherman, though, is no longer a threat, so that's one less thing. So at this point, uh, the good news is that um, it's only going to take a couple of hits to hit the OI. The bad news is he's got this gun to do it with. Even with all of the, the premium everything, even with a good crew, the dispersion on this gun is still about a third worse than every other non-derp gun at uh, tier 5 or on a medium tank. Uh, I think the T-34 76mm gun might be close to it, but this is, I mean, it's, it's not the accuracy and, and the aim time so much. They're perfectly average for this tier. It, it is the dispersion, especially when you're moving around. And it's kind of like, what, what's the, the other tank where they did that with? It might be going all the way back to, uh, was it the FV for 202 when that came in as a premium? I seem to remember that had really horrible dispersion as well. It's when they put really horrible dispersion on a slow tank, or a, at least a, you know, in this case it's not a fast tank by any means. It's not, maybe, maybe calling it slow is not entirely fair, but um, having said that, the FV was at 35 kph, this is a max of 45, which you'll only ever hit when you go downhill. Um, these Not fast machines, so there's no excuse in terms of the speed, there's no excuse in terms of the size of the gun, it's just shafted, absolutely shafted. So he doesn't quite get the kill on that OI, though he does get in at a final hit for now almost 1500 damage, and with the cap timer pinging off, well, we know exactly where that last KV-1 is. Now, this has been pretty close. This is one of the reasons why I chose this 
when uh, looking through a, a couple. And I, I did also look at some other replays. I, I was just in the mood for something mid-tier. And uh, the fact that CM had uploaded all these uh, 3K games. I mean, it's just not a tank that you see around on the battlefield. It's like the uh, the, uh, the the Turan or uh, some of the other um, mid-tier premiums that are just not very good. And you just don't see them very often because they're not very good. And it, it slightly boggles the mind. Because on, on the flip side of that coin, you've got premiums like the T26 E5 and the AMX 49 where they are extremely strong machines so I don't know in terms of balance I think I've said something along these lines before you you never know with wargaming it's a toss of a coin you never know whether you're gonna get something that's that's just right or if it's gonna be ridiculously bad or if it's actually going to be a bit too good They've never been able to quite find that happy balance all the time, unfortunately. <clears throat> so that was uh, a Ace Tanker. All the ones he uploaded were Ace Tankers, but uh, this was one of the more interesting matches. Um, he actually did a fair bit of damage for a, a Tier 5 medium. 1,790 is not bad at all as a, a top tier. Um, he also did 861 spotting damage. Now, this was by far the best on his team, um, but uh, it's not like the enemy team was any great shakes either, to be honest. Um, apart from the KV-1, none of them really ventured out of the enemy base, and so literally any other tier 5 medium tank, with the possible exception of the G1R, which is not great either, uh, he, he could have done that if not ha have done better than that in that particular set of circumstances against that enemy team um, but the fact that he had to run full premium everything um, there are some targets in that you know especially the KV-1 where if he'd had a normal loadout and maybe a couple of rounds of APCR uh, he'd have badly struggled because it's essentially in its firepower it's got a stock 75 mil gun with really bad gun handling and it can see tier 7s because go screw yourself. <laughs> I don't know, for 3k it's just, it's an enduring mystery. They'll surely buff it at some point, surely. Or maybe it'll just be one of these ones that gets lost in the mists of time and like one and a half years later they finally buff it. As they did recently with the T3485M, which is another one of those forgotten mid-tier premium medium tanks which was just, it wasn't even bad, it was just like mediocre and underwhelming compared to another premium that came out which was just so much better and basically the same thing. So um, yeah, I don't know, you, it's just wargaming is so unpredictable and sometimes they don't seem to want your money and other times they really do. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this game. Um, probably more than CM has been enjoying it, but, you know, it's no no one made him decide to three-mark this. Uh, with a, a tank like this, I suppose, theoretically, it's easier, but then you actually have to go and play the thing, so there's that. Uh, but nonetheless, I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and, as always, stay tuned for more.